Well, hello. Uh, welcome to the first ever Whole Story podcast. We want to tell golf stories. And so we're going to have guests on each week. We want to tell great golf stories. He is, as some people have described, one of the greatest interviewers in golf. It's an honor to have Matt Adams join us. Amy Neff, the head coach for the University of North Carolina women's golf team from Meredith College. We are welcoming Sarah and Macy Kay, two ladies that they joined the team at the last minute, played in these tournaments to allow their team to make it to the uh, conference championship. Alex Podlegar, uh, he is the senior media relations uh, here at Pinehurst. We've got Michael Whalen, 1994, hired to create and develop the Golf Channel. Today's guest, we've got David Jones. David uh, better known around the golf world, maybe, as the UK golf guy, Seth McWhorter, the founder of McWhorter Creative. He specializes in marketing, illustration, logo creation, kind of graphic design, all the really cool things that you see on golf shirts and, and hats and everything that people spend a ton of money for. Our guest is a well-known singer and songwriter, well-known songs like I Swear, the Terrell Hatton song, and then a couple of the favorites, When Will Tony Finau Win Again?, and the day that Tony Finau won again. So, Sam Harrop, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. He's a photographer, videographer, just a creator of all things. Founder of Gimme Golf Club and the Gimme Golf Studio. He's just one of those guys that is a gatherer of people. Our guest today is Kyle Walton. Kyle, welcome. Thanks for being here. You are on the trek to break the world record of number of rounds played in a year. You've Patrick Kane. We welcome you to the Whole Story Podcast. Uh, we've got Michael Verska joining us today. He is the Director of Custom Fitting and Player Performance for Callaway Golf. So, Michael, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us today. Morgan Purvis, the Director of Partnerships at a new course in Aiken, South Carolina, Old Barnwell. So, Morgan, welcome. Chrissy McPherson, played at Conway High School uh, went on to the University of South Carolina, the Gamecock, 2003 SEC Golfer of the Year, three-time first-team All-SEC, three-time NCAA All-American. 2010, she was inducted into the South Carolina Gamecocks Hall of Fame, made it to the LPGA Tour in 2007, her automatic qualifier to the 2009 U.S. Solheim Cup team. A new book came out, Live and Let Die. So, Alan, Welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. Channing Benjamin, thank you for joining us on the uh, Whole Story Podcast. We are honored to have John Sherman joining us today. And you can see and hear him all the time on TV. He's one of PBS Sports golf announcers, uh, does an incredible job with that, and also host of On The Mark Podcast. We appreciate welcoming Mark Emmelman to the Whole Story Podcast. We always talk about golf stories. That's what we love. That's what this podcast is all about. And I feel like today's guest might be the king of telling the golf stories. So uh, I want to introduce Tom Coyne. Yes. That eagle the 13th hole, hard the 14th hole on 15 to like 18 feet. And I drain that one for another eagle. And I get up there and it's a 155 yard shot. I hit an eight iron just to the right of the hole and it disappears in the shadows and none of us could see. And I look over at the tee on 17 and a guy points at me and then he points down Ugh. and we all went crazy i threw my club tossed my hat it's never going to get any better than this i've tried 10 years this was the 10th try i have never gotten through local because it is very hard so we ended up having a seven man playoff and then the second hole i birdied it and so i got in uh, to final qualifying on my 10th try so as you're watching your son kind of mature and grow both in golf and in life just what's it like from your side watching this happen um, it's just about the coolest thing that you, you would think that it would be. And we, we stepped down the steps and walked up and went to the first tee to look at it. Who's standing on the first tee with a podium, the Claire jug on top of the podium next to him, but Tom Watson. I told my college coach, Stacy Slavonic at Michigan state. I was like, Hey, I'm thinking I'm going to apply at these jobs. It was like Georgia, Auburn, UCF. And, and I, uh, and then like a month later, she's like, you don't need to go to those other jobs. Can you come back to Michigan State? Email goes out to the entire student body. We need some golfers. And y'all two stepped up. No way this is happening right now. No way. Uh, this is free entry onto a collegiate team. And then um, basically he sent out a text and I was like, okay, I'm on the team. And I came back to my house and I was like, so pumped and so excited. I was like, I'm a collegiate athlete. These last 10 years, really since the 14 opens, but then also kind of the two years before that with 
the restoration of number two. It's just kind of been this new golden age for Pinehurst. So when I flew to Wimbledon, I had to put together the entire concept of the Golf Channel. Every single show, every single person, the sets, what were they go they're going to look like, the music, the graphics, uh, uh, everything that you saw in 1995, I put together in seven hours on a cocktail napkin. So I took out a two iron, hit the two iron up there, can't see the green. I got up there, I spent a good five minutes looking around in the rough, in the bunker, checked it all, and did that thing we've all done, and just when you walk past the hole, having a look in, and there it was, it was there sitting in the hole. And I think with with design and branding, um, if you if you got people talking about the brand and talking about a logo, then you, you've, you've done something good. Yeah, I started watching some of the other tournaments, and then you develop a bit of a knowledge about the players and the tournaments and everything. Uh, so you have a kind of a bit of a encyclopedia in your mind about about golf and then i just put it together with the with the music thing and i thought well, maybe there's something in this you know maybe you can make a a couple of songs out of you know out of golf, something different and that that's kind of how it started you know you can always just recreate stuff that people want to have recreate but if you can if you can make something that you know pulls at the heartstrings or is is, is emotional or hits people in the right place and tells a good story then they're going to come to you and say like what do you want to do you know, what do you want to make? What is your all-time greatest memory in golf or golf shot? It was at uh, Victoria National in Indi in Evansville. I hit it right into the this the junk, I'm like in the bushes kind of, about 160 yards to the hole, but it's through a forest. There's a way, it's kind of like a gap in the trees. As soon as it hit the gap, you could hear the other guys go, like there was like a, <laughs> uh, like a gasp. And then it had to turn about 60, 70 yards. It came into the green sideways, full sideways, um, rolled up to about 15 feet, landed, and everybody was like, that was the greatest shot I've ever seen, um, you know, and I was like, that was the greatest shot I ever hit. Or what's your all time greatest golf shot? It's hard to not say my whole in I still, I, I, I can tell my, I'm getting the stupid giddy grin that I have. So uh, I hit one a uh, little short, little par three, hit a sand wedge, literally three feet by the pin, took one bounce and spun back in like it, the ball knew what it was doing. So um, I've hit, I don't know, I've hit some cool shots in my life, but again, it, Hole in one is literal perfection, so I'm going to stick with that one. I was going to celebrate that by playing 36 different Alistair McKenzie golf courses while I was 36 years old. The highlight of, of my career, I mean, I, I I got a couple of individual SEC championships, but getting to win it as a team in 2002 was uh, definitely the coolest week and, and coolest event for uh, to for my whole career there. When I won SECs the first year, Hootie Johnson was the uh, chairman at Augusta National at the time, and uh, he called me to congratulate me. And uh, you know, he asked me, "How would you like to? Uh, how would you like to invite uh, nine of your friends and come play Augusta Nationals?" Jeff Birch, Landman, thank you for the invite. By the way, yeah. this place is awesome. Tell me, the first time you came out here, you did what? You kind of scouted it out before the course was here, right? Yeah. So I was lucky enough that uh, Rob Collins asked me to come out and take some pictures and uh as you can see out there it's absolutely photographer's paradise uh, yeah you know and everything everything else about this place is uh it's icing on the cake but man what a, what a unique golf course this golf course is very um bold and it's very aggressive but it's also very playable so um, it feels like there's a lot of there is a lot of elevation change, but the golf course just play is very very playable. It's very very fun. It's one of the wildest places I've ever been, and it is uh, it's beautiful. You got to see it. You got to see it with your own eyes. I'm I'm, I'm the reason I'm not looking at the cameras because yeah. the view's right behind me, and I'm just looking at it. You mentioned Phil. If he was injected with truth serum and you got to ask him one question, what would that be? <laughs> uh, was it worth it? The vindication for phil may come over time and he may yet wind up on that first tee at augusta with tiger woods in 20 or 30 years and uh, he may be a Ryder cup captain down the road it's not gonna happen in in 24 at beth page which seemed to be his birthright so we don't know yet how how this is all going to play out for phil i think in his heart of hearts he would say it was worth it because it's just who he is as a person he has to be right and he he has to feel like he has control over every situation and he kind of does on live. Like he's changed his destiny. So 
uh, but that would that would be interesting. I would I would love to know the answer to that myself. I made a hole in one by myself one day, so I'm gonna put that in there as my. And this was at Bally Neal in Holyoke, Colorado. I was out there, there a few years ago by myself on the fifth hole. Um, the ball flies far in Colorado, very far. I had like 160 yards. I hit nine irons, a little downwind too. And I saw it go in. One hop went in. Of course, I'm by myself. So I had my cell phone. So I start recording me running up to the <laughs> to the uh, green. And uh, I remember getting to the hole. And um, there was a big old cricket inside the cup that was actually was so big. I think it's a big bug in Colorado out there in the out of the middle of nowhere. He was like, I could barely see the golf ball, this big cricket. And um, I'm not like you know, freaked out about bugs, but I wasn't feeling to put my hand in there getting the ball. So I was like, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. I have it all on camera, man. I was like, come on, buddy. He was my witness. I, I, we we uh, we actually claimed that he was the witness to my hole in one. The quest to have more emotional stability and enjoy yourself and be grateful for the experience um, you know, that was something I struggled with for a really long time. So I think at the minimum, if you approach getting to play golf from a perspective of, I get to do this, this is going to be fun. I'm going to be out there with my buddies. I'm going to be outside. Um, if you can commit to reminding yourself of that several times throughout, I, I still do this, even when I play in tournaments, I'm trying to devote some time to kind of soak in the experience, no matter how well or poorly I'm playing. Um, and I think having that mindset can actually have like a strong impact on your mental game and your mood. What would you tell people is the best thing about taking your kids out on the golf course with you from your own experience? Oh, there's so, there's so much. It's not even about them hitting the ball. I, I find it very interesting, like what they get, uh, like attracted to. And my son absolutely loves playing in the sand bunkers. And he loves playing in the, you know, on part three is the sand uh, divot repair stuff. He loves filling divots. So I just think it's it's fun to see him, you know, not necessarily hitting it, just enjoying being out on the golf course. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, filling the divots or playing in the sand, riding the golf cart. I mean, hunting worms, he th throws rocks into the uh, creeks, you know, off the bridges. So it's not even necessarily about the the golfing. It's like, watching him just enjoy being out on the golf course i'll tell you what the most memorable shot was i've made a hole in one on a real golf course but i've also made a, an ace on a little tiny hole that's in the back garden of jim nance's place it was an event that he always holds for all the cbs people over the pebble beach week and this was back in 2017 maybe 2018 and i got up there just my first shot i'd ever hit and there it's a sand which the whole place is about 70 yards with like limited flight balls. And I hit this thing, land short, one skip, goes in the hole. And I, and the view from the place is awesome because it goes behind his house. And then you look off to the right and you can see, you know, Pebble Beach and you can see the bay. And I just turned around, and I just looked at the bay and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I mean, this is <laughs> the most ethereal experience I've ever had. It was Twilight Golf with my dad and one of his buddies. And everyone just kind of went silent when they saw the ball was on the green and, uh, and it wasn't far from the hole, uh, and it had a little downhill slider. And when it went in, I can still hear my dad shouting, uh, cause you know, it's near the clubhouse and I'm sure he wanted everyone to look over, um, his like exclamation of, uh, of watching that happen. So yeah, it, my approach shot on nine that time. At Rolling Green. It was cool. It was cool. And at dinner that night, I just remember him saying, like, just sitting there. It was like he hit the shot. And that was the cool thing about it, right? Like, at the end of the day, like, me making an eagle, um, it's, you know, it's great. But doing it with your dad there at a course he belonged to for 40 years and, and had long ago left reaching it in regulation behind him uh, to be able to do that with him was was cool. Guys, you did a great job. I think you've got, you know, smart questions, uh, great personalities. Nice to kind of have a in the flesh, you know, chat about golf and all things music and golf and whatever. That's good. Oh, man, this was fun. Yeah, I, I, I it was an honor to come on and chat with somebody that uh, uh, appreciates it the way, the way that I do. So I really, really thank you for your for your time. And uh, uh, thanks for letting me tell the whole story.